I just bathed both of my cats and now we're gonna clean out Gristle's ears. And then once we've done that, I'm gonna rub some coconut oil into her skin and then get her dressed. Look, you can see all of the wax that accumulates in her ears over the week. This is all of the wax we got out of her ears and stay tuned for my next video where I'm actually gonna look at this under a microscope. Okay guys, I've just got some coconut oil in my hands and I'm just gonna rub that onto her skin and kind of let it melt in. Um, it's like a nice little massage for my cat. <laughs> She's all hydrated now, and I just want to say, if you're thinking about getting a hairless cat, please do think twice, because they do require so much more work than normal cats. They require a different diet, they can't go outside, and you have to bath them regularly. And if you can't keep up with this very high-maintenance lifestyle for them, then you'll see the repercussions of that, and they will get sick, and they will be very dirty. But they do make such loving pets, and I love them so much. And now we have two clean, beautiful princesses. I love you guys. Okay guys, so my hair is completely rock solid with gelatine and I did it wrong. I mixed it into my hair instead of slicking it back. So my hair is infested with bits of gelatine and my mum is going to help me get it off. My mum thinks the only thing that's going to work is dish soap. So we're going to try this. And as you can see, it is really stuck onto my hair. And this is water resistant, by the way. That's why swimmers use it. But I've seen everyone just be able to peel it off. Okay, we're now going to put dish soap into my hair. So, squeeze. And now we're just gonna try and scrub it out, but it doesn't even feel like it's doing anything yet, but we'll, we'll put some water on there. No. Very nice. Okay guys, it's starting to come out sort of, and I will keep you updated. Hey guys, so today is Milo the Meerkat's birthday, and we obviously have to celebrate, so we're gonna start by doing one of his favorite things, which is giving him a bath. We're starting with a little birthday protein filled treat, which is some Moreo worms. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> As always, we're just starting with a lukewarm puddle of water. And I've added some bubbles in there to make this spa day the best. Come on then, Milo. In you go. Milo loves bath time. Now Milo's fur is all wet, we're going to let him play around in the water, and I'll be back with a part two where I actually scrub his coat. He is so relaxed in the bath, he literally loves it. <laughs> My hairless cats leak oil everywhere, so today we're going to be giving them a bath. I paid £50 to wash my bedding two days ago, and I'm not even joking, just from letting them wander around my bed, they left these little oil marks everywhere. And if I'm honest, the oil is getting worse. And this is their little bed after two days as well. This is literally just pure oil that leaks out of their skin, and this is white. Anyway, first up is Twiglet, because she's the dirtiest. Anyway, let's run a lukewarm pool of water. Okay, I added some bubbles to the water, but I am going to be using the shower. But just take note of how clear the water is now and how dirty it will be after. In you go, Twiglet. Please don't be mad. Good girl. Okay, now we're going to wet her fur and then we're going to scrub it with soap. Okay, I've got some soap on my glove and now we're going to go in and just massage her skin very gently. Okay guys, now Twiglet is all clean and look how dirty the water is. See you at part two. Okay guys, so apparently everyone's fruit actually is full of bugs and if you put it in salty water, the bugs will crawl out. Well, I've left these strawberries sitting in the salt water and I'm gonna show you the results. So I've checked and there are absolutely no bugs. There are little wormy things, but I'm pretty sure that's just seeds coming off of the strawberries. Look, if I zoom in, you can see that there's lots of little things crawling around, but honey, no. <laughs> Uh, you can see lots of things crawling around, but no bugs. So if you don't wash your fruit, you are safe. Hey guys, so today we're taking baby Pongo through the Starbucks drive through for the first time ever. It's a really hot day and we were going on a little drive, so I'm going to get him an ice water. Hi, could I please get two of the new lovely bubbly drinks? And then could I get an ice water, please, for my baby fox? Okay guys, so I just ordered the ice water for Pongo and he's getting very warm, so this is a very good idea. And then after this, I'm taking him for a little run around. Okay, so update, she said she's going to put some lemon in the water for us. Also, I'm trying the new blueberry uh, thingy with bubble tea. And the skis are, forgot to put in the bubble tea, so now he's adding it in it. Some people, bro. Okay, guys, so we got our lemon ice water, and now we're going to offer his majesty some. Do you want some of your water? Good boy. Pongo says he doesn't like Starbucks water, and he prefers McDonald's. <laughs> So foxes actually eat lemon, so we're going to see if Pongo wants some of the lemon. He gave it a lick, but 
<laughs> no. Oh, there we go. Is that nice? Pongo, it's good for you cooling down. Maybe he's just frightened by the really cold temperature. Good. Okay, guys, so turns out Pongo is not a fan of boring water. He wants the blueberry ice thing. Stay tuned for more Pongo adventures. Okay, guys, we just finished with the earwax candle in my mum's ear, and now we're going to go blow it out. Okay, I'm just going to slowly unwrap the earwax candle. And oh my goodness. I just have so much wax in them. So in my video the other day, I proved that these were real by burning one out on its own. And as you can see, there is so much more wax when I just did it in my mum's ear. And now it's time to reveal to my mum that cotton buds maybe don't work. Mum, look at all the wax that came out of your ear. No, it did not. Yeah? Shut up, Kyle. Do you think they're fake? That didn't come out of my ear. It did. That's from the candle. No. They've got to be fake, haven't they? Yeah, wax isn't fake. Oh. Hmm. You need to clean your ears out better. Oh. I'm collecting pearls from real oysters every day until I have enough pearls to make my mum a pearl necklace and I just got a drill to drill through the pearls. Obviously I can't turn pearls into a necklace unless I have this thing which drills a little hole in and then I can put some string through it. Okay, I'm opening up the first pearl right here. Let's get it out. <laughs> oh guys, this is one of the pearls that actually cracked because I stood on it by accident so it's super easy to open. Oh my gosh, a green pearl. This is so cool. Look how pretty it is. Okay, I'm now opening another pearl and this one's sealed. I'm using this little bookmark to open it. And by the way, this bookmark is actually me and my mum bought it on the ferry when we were moving to Ireland when I was like 10 years old. <laughs> okay, let's crack it open. Oh, and in this one, we have a green and an orange pearl. Stay tuned for my next video where I'm going to be drilling the pearls. Okay, this is already burning my face, so I need to take it off. You never know, this burning may actually be it working, but let's wipe it away. Well, all of the seeds just went. Okay, I'm going to go wash this off properly and then we'll see if there's any difference. Okay, I just washed my face and I put my moisturizer on, but as you can see, my face still looks the same. This thing is a lie. Hey guys, so these right here are ear candles and you put them in your ear, you light them on fire and they suck up all the wax from your ear, apparently. But somebody in my last video actually said that these are fake and if you light them on fire without putting them in your ear, they're still gonna have ear wax in them. So let's put it to the test. <laughs> Okay, we're lighting our candle on fire and now we're just gonna let it burn down all the way to the end And I will be opening it in my next video. I'm curious to know if these are fake or not I actually did one yesterday and all day I've had the worst headache But I don't know if that's because it cleared my ears right out or maybe it destroyed my ears. I don't know <laughs> Hey guys, so these right here are earwax candles and you basically take one of the candles You put it in your ear you light it on fire and it sucks up all your earwax and you can see how really dirty your ears actually were. So I'm going to put this in my ear, light it and we'll see what's inside my ear. A lot of people say these are fake, but if you actually look down the candle, um, you can see it's empty before I actually use it. Okay, so I'm currently laid down on the bed. I look a bit stupid, um, but we're going to try and light the top of the candle. There we go. And it sounds like there is a volcano erupting in my ear, but now we just wait for it to burn down. I hope this doesn't burn me. Burn me. Twiglet, get away. I only have one hand right now and I do not need you near the candle. Go away, please. Okay? Guys, I'm going to let this burn down because I'm actually running out of time. And then I'm going to open the candle on the next video. It's lunchtime for my animals, so let's make my pet fox Pongo his lunch. We're currently weaning Pongo onto raw food, so he's had raw chicken this morning, but we're still giving him his normal cooked dog food, just so we don't upset his digestive system by doing it too quickly. I'm just starting off with this regular basic dog food, and now we're going to boil an egg and give him half of this. Just like a lot of my animals, Pongo requires a taurine supplement in his diet, so we're going to add a very small amount of this. And I'm just sprinkling this over the base of his food. And of course his diet is mostly protein based, but we're going to give him some sliced apple as well. We've got Pongo's lunch here and it looks deliciosa and now we're going to feed it to him. 
Hello, baby. And Pongo is only actually outside for feeding time. He's inside usually, but he needs his own space when he eats. Foxes are very territorial over food, as you're going to be able to tell. Hey, baby. Any food he doesn't eat, we'll try and hide, but we'll take it out. But yeah, that's Pongo's lunch. Pongo's lunch. Okay guys, so my mom is obsessed with cleaning her ears and she cleans them out every single day. But I actually read online that cleaning your ears every single day makes your ears a lot worse right by your eardrum and it produces a lot more wax. And these right here are earwax candles, so we're gonna use these on my mom's ears and see how waxy her ears really are. Okay guys, so first of all, we're just placing the ear candle in my mom's ear. Okay guys, so I've now got the earwax candle in my mom's ear and I'm just gonna hold it here until it burns down to about here. By the way, when using these, please be careful. The candle takes quite a while to burn, so I'm gonna let my mum hold this until it's burnt out, and then I'll be back with a part two to see how much wax she actually has. Hey guys, so today Pongo the fox cub went to the vets for the first time ever, and he got his vaccine, so we're now gonna give him his flea and wormy treatment. So this is the tablet we're using, and we just have to give him one per month. Hello, baby. Are you ready to get wormed? Yeah? <laughs> okay guys, so we've put the tablet into a little bit of salmon, and now it's time to feed it to Pongo. There you go, baby. Oh, you can see the tablet. <laughs> oh my gosh, is he gonna avoid the tablet? Nah, he's got it. Good boy, Pongo. Yes, you are. And now Pongo will be worm free. Mwah. Yes, you will. <laughs> So as you guys know, I have two hairless cats and the worst part about cleaning them is actually cleaning out their ears. So this is Twiglet right here. She's just been in the bath and I didn't use an ear rinse today. So I'm going to get all of the wax out manually. But look, that's just after one dunk. So I'm just going to go in and see where I can see the oil without going too deep and just give it a little twist. And look, all of the water has melted the oil. A lot of people actually ask, oh, how do they leak oil and where does the wax come from and la la la. Um, the oil on their skin is actually just sebum, which is what we produce when we get blackheads. It's just hairless cats obviously don't have hair to absorb the oil like other animals and that's why it leaks out. Okay, I'm going to keep going until we just start getting a clean cotton bud. But there is a lot of wax to get out here. Ugh. Okay, guys, and here is the after. Just look how gross that is. And now Twiglet is all dressed up and ready for the week. <laughs> okay guys, it's part two of the ear candle and I'm gonna go blow this out. And now we can open this up and see if there's any wax inside. Okay, I got the candle here and we are gonna just peel it around and... Ew! Oh my gosh, look! Ew! Ew, ew, ew! Oh no, there's wax everywhere. <laughs> okay, this is disgusting, but look at all of the wax. That is all for my ear, and I clean my ears out every single day. I have a few friends who never clean their ears out, so let me know if you want me to try it out on them. <laughs> I have 30 pets, and today is flea treatment day, so we're going to give all of my pets flea treatment. Okay, guys, first up is Nala, and we're just going to squeeze it onto her coat. And next up is Hunter, and we're just going to do the same thing. Okay, guys, and now it's time for Dorothy, our very aggressive female meerkat. That's why I'm wearing the animal handling gloves. There we go. And now it's Milo, our very friendly male meerkat. And now it is Gristle's turn. There we go, Gristle. And we're gonna give this a little rub. Because she doesn't have any hair, she can't absorb it as well. Okay guys, and now I'm just squeezing the same onto Twiglet and we'll let that soak in. Okay guys, and now we're onto the monkeys and this first one is Freddy. And now it's Trish, our female monkey. And that's the monkeys all done. Make sure to follow for a part two. Part two. Hey guys, and welcome to ASMR with my pet Tenric Flo. Last on the menu, we have a cricket.
Milo's in the bath and he looks like a little seal. Milo, where's my meerkat gone? You look like a little baby seal. Yes, you do. <laughs> so now that his fur is all wet, I'm just going to rub some soap into it and get him cleaned. And I don't bath Milo very much, but because we're going to be taking him out today a little bit, I just thought it'd be best to clean his coat, and he actually really enjoys bath time. And you can actually see how much he needed this by all of the murkiness in the water. The meerkats do clean each other, um, and Dorothy will obviously like help him if he's got a little mat or anything, but it's always good just to give him a little bath, and it means we can check his health while we do it. Because meerkats fight so much, sometimes you'll have little wounds and stuff that you can't really see when his fur is all fluffy. Oh, hello, baby. <laughs> Happy birthday, Milo. We love you lots. Okay, this is part two of finding out if the ear candle's real or not, and we're gonna blow it out. Okay, and now it's time to unravel this and see if they actually suck up your earwax or not. Oh, hold on. Wait. So I was about to say these are definitely fake, but then it's actually got this big chunk of like green wax, which is different to ear wax, but then there is also all of this yellow stuff there. I wouldn't say it looks the same as when I did it with my ear, but honestly, I'm not sure. I feel like these might be fake. <laughs> Okay, so as we all know, raisins are actually just dried out grapes. And I've seen about a million videos on my For You page this week of people pumping air into raisins and turning them back into grapes. So I went through all of the effort of actually ordering a syringe so that I can try it. Syringes have actually always been one of my biggest fears, so this is a blunt syringe, so it's not scary, don't worry. Okay, we've got our syringe and I feel like a doctor. And now we're gonna take our raisins, which I actually had to go through a lot of effort to buy this morning. Here we go. Okay guys, and now we are gonna pump the air into the raisin, slowly. Okay, I'm still going. Okay guys, I will be showing you the result in my next video. This is actually pretty cool. Okay guys, so in lockdown, I decided that I wanted to be a hot, cool skater boy and I invested in this skateboard, which I actually spent a lot of money on and I never learned how to skateboard. So today I'm gonna show you uh, my skills so far. Okay guys, so no one in the UK washes their fruit. And if you say you wash your fruit, you are a liar. I only wash my fruit when I'm feeding it to animals, but for me, I wash nothing. Anyway, apparently if you put strawberries into water with salt, all of the bugs from the strawberries will crawl out because they can't stand being in the salt water and you will see what you're really eating when you don't wash your fruit. Okay, I'm pouring lots of salt into the cup. Now we're going to add some water. Now I'm using a spoon to just stir the mixture together. And now we are going to add our strawberries. And now we give it about an hour or so, and hopefully in an hour I will have a load of bugs to show you guys. This is part two of bath time for Milo, and we're going to scrub his coat with some sensitive baby shampoo. This is Milo's last few months of living inside, so I'm really enjoying it before he goes out into the wilderness. Oh Milo, I love you. I can't believe he turns four today. <laughs> Milo is now all soapy and we're gonna get him washed off. By the way guys, a lot of people believe meerkats hate water, which is generally true, but Milo, because he's been bathed from so young, actually really loves the warmth. All right, Milo, let's get you all clean. Okay guys, Milo's all clean now and we're gonna get him out the bath. Come on, come on. Good boy, oh, big stretch. And now guys, it's time to get Milo dried off and give him lots of attention. When meerkats are super relaxed, especially if you scratch them on their neck, they roll their eyes back because they love it so much. I would love if I could bath Milo and Dorothy together, but because she's a female, she's super hormonal and just hates the whole experience with humans. All right, I'm gonna let Milo get dried off now. I'm so excited for the farm when I can have a bathroom just for my animals. <laughs> I have 30 pets and today is bath day, so we're going to be bathing all of my pets. And up first is Pongo, our baby fox cub. Pongo! Hey, little baby. <laughs> first up, we're going to run a lukewarm pool of water. And I've just put Pongo into the bath and now we're going to wet his coat. But before we do this, we're going to try and put a shower cup on him so he doesn't get water in his ears. Pongo has his shower cup on and now we're going to wet all of his fur. Now Pongo's coat is wet, it's time to wash his coat with some shampoo. Oh, Pongo, you look so cute. <laughs> yes, you do. Hello, guys, my name is Pongo the fox. Baby Pongo is now all soapy and we're going to rinse the soap off and then get him dried up. 
Pongo is now half dry and it's a nice sunny day so we can just let him lounge around in the sun and he'll dry off shortly. Next up is Goose, my crazy parrot, but he's super easy to bath because he does it all himself. Goose is now enjoying bath time cleaning himself and he's looking great. I only filmed this video in 60 seconds so if you want a part 2, let me know. People ask me this question all the time, how do I remember my pet's names? So I'm gonna tell you all of my pet's names. Up first we have Twiglet and I remember Twiglet is Twiglet because she's smaller than my other cat and she has green eyes. And then right here we have Twiglet's sister Gristle and she has blue eyes. She's also bigger, fluffy and she has a different personality. Please ignore the red on my nose, I waxed my nose before this video and now my nose looks weird. Right here we have my Pac-Man frog and his name is Mr. Noodle Cakes. This is my giant African land snail Turbo. I have two giant African land snails, but I have forgotten the other one's name. I feel like it was Spencer or Spencer. I think Spencer. Then this is Frank, my giant African millipede. This cutie right here is Flo, the hedgehog lesser Tenric. And then we have Simon and he's a male, so he's much fatter. He also needs his nails cut today. Over here we have the two Bambinos and one is called Fraser and the other one is... The other one is... I can't quite remember. And right here we have Snappy, my amputee bearded dragon, and I think you can see why he's called Snappy. He's three-legged because he was attacked by another bearded dragon when he was a baby, and this is why he's so aggressive. Up here we have Blaze, and Blaze recently had surgery, so I'm not gonna go near him. Yemen chameleons hate being held anyway, so he's not the happiest little guy. This right here is Patricia Barbara Margaret Thomas. And Freddy is up here, he was just sleeping, so I've annoyed him now. This right here is Dorothy, but she's very, very aggressive, so I won't go near her. And then up next is Goose. Hello, baby. Hello. Mwah. <coughs> kiss, kiss. Mwah. And then up here we have our new parallel, Matilda. We took Matilda on recently because unfortunately Goose's friend died and Matilda keeps him company. This right here is Pog, my white tree frog. This right here is Prudence and she is just massive. I think she's a girl because of the look of her ears, but I'm not entirely sure because I think I have heard her make a mating call. Please help. And then this right here is... I feel like I actually called him Prudence, but now I know he's a boy. I think maybe Billy. Billy the Frog. This right here is Stanley, and Stanley is a scorpion. And then after that, we have my dogs, my fox, and my other makeup, Milo. So if you want a part two of this, let me know, because this video is like nearly three minutes long. Hey guys, so today we're dyeing my dog's hair, and we are going to be dyeing Honey's hair red. This hair dye is basically just beetroot juice and it washes out after one use so we're gonna dye her hair, get my mum's reaction and then we'll wash it out. It's completely safe, I've had it on my skin before, it's basically a dog shampoo with colouring in it so she needs a bath anyway so it's just for fun. So I'm only gonna dye her tail or otherwise we might make a huge mess but I'm just gonna squeeze this on and rub it in. Okay so I got the hair dye onto Honey and she looks like she should be called Simba um, but we've got to leave this for like 20 minutes and then we're gonna go and give her a bath. I'll be washing it out of her today, but in the next video, I'm gonna get my mum's reaction and I'm not gonna tell my mum. I'm just gonna let her see and see if she notices. I haven't been able to book a haircut for three weeks and my hair now looks like this. So I'm gonna give myself a bowl cut. My mum isn't home at the minute, so it's not like I can ask her to cut my hair. And I thought, why not try it the old fashioned way and give myself a stylish bowl cut? Okay, so I just cut the length to here, which is what we're going for. And now we're gonna cut it across here as well. There we go. And then the last step is this side. Okay guys, and um, we have our bowl cut. I look like Will Byers, um, but now we're gonna mess my hair up and what on earth have I done? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm, I'm still gonna need that haircut. This looks horrific. Okay guys, so we got the Big Papa Van der Holten's pickle and we're all gonna try it. And we're gonna rate it, but we don't have the fruit roll up or... Tuckies. Or tackies. 
No, you didn't. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like a McDonald's pickle. It does. Okay. <laughs> Everyone slide it up. <laughs> Ready? Right, three, two, two, one. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> it's really good. Oh, it's not as crunchy as I thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're gonna drink the juice. <laughs> I don't know how. Do you just put it back in the box? Yeah. It's just so salty. Yeah. Okay, guys, so I tried to do the synchronized swimmer hair um, and it peels off so usually they just pull it here and it peels off but I don't know if I use the wrong amount of gelatin and I'm not exaggerating here I cannot get it off my hair I can get it off there I don't know if I didn't do it thick enough or what but my this is stuck look at the inside of my hair I have ru ruined my hair what, what should I do and by the way, our boiler is broken, so we don't have any hot water. So it's not like I can go and run this under hot water either. This, <laughs> why, why did it do this? My hairless cat is growing hair and it's time to give her a bath. Hairless cats grow hair due to being too cold or due to hormonal issues. But she is bigger than my other cat. and My other cat has not grown any hair and they do have a heater. So I think she's just hormonal. But it's now coming into summer and she's actually starting to shed that hair. So by giving her a bath, I think she'll actually lose a lot of it. You can actually see she's started to shed the hair by her tail. Come on, Gristle, let's get you a bath. I love all my pets equally, but Gristle is so, so, so affectionate to me. We're gonna lower Gristle into the water and she's already a little bit hesitant. There's a crazy story about a guy who actually shaved normal cats and sold them as hairless cats. Anyway, let's get her fur all wet and we're gonna scrub her. It's time to just scrub her coat. I know she doesn't really have a coat, by the way, I'm only saying fur as a joke. But look at the water now and then check it out in a sec. I've put her little shower cap on so that she doesn't get too much water in her ears. Now we have a clean gristle, we're gonna rub some coconut oil into her fur, get her dressed and she's all done. done. I'm opening oyster pearls every day until I have enough pearls to make my mama pearl necklace and we're gonna open as many as we can. I just opened two and we have a green one and an orange one, these ones are super cool. This one's huge, so let's crack it open. There we go, and I'm just going to use this tool to pry it open. Like that. Oh. Oh, a purple pearl. This is the next one, and I'm just doing the same thing. And then we're going to crack it open. And wow, this one's really big. Someone tried to tell me the smaller ones actually have um, bigger pearls than the larger oysters. I don't know if that's true, um, because they said that it uses all of the energy and proteins actually developing the pearl rather than itself, but people can talk, so we'll see. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness, they were not wrong. We got a huge, uh, like, ready purple one. Okay, guys, and the very last one is this big heavy one, and I have a good feeling about this, um, so let's crack it open. I'm just going to again stick the tool in and give it a twist. Ah, wait, this is hard. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, yay, we got a nice normal one. Okay, so today we got six pearls, and now I'm going to drill through them. Not only did I buy a drill, but I also bought this other kit, which you actually use a vise and hold the pearl in place. Okay guys, so I drilled a hole through this one. But drilling the holes is really, really difficult and it's very late here, but tomorrow I'm going to go out and buy like some nice string or even a chain and then I'm going to drill some other pearls, open some more and hopefully we'll have a necklace and then we can go and get it valued and see how much it's worth.